Hey filmmaker, Josh here from Momentum Productions and today we are going to learn how to properly pan and tilt with your glide cam. While you watch this video, I strongly recommend that you jot down some notes. So that way you have a reference to look at while you're at a shoot. Before continuing on with this video, you need to watch this playlist. This is one of my best YouTube tutorial videos on how to properly operate and balance a glide cam. This video is more for moderate and advanced users. So make sure you check out that playlist. If you've watched a lot of my glide cam tutorial videos, you know that I'm a big fan of gimbal tapping. So what's gimbal tapping? Gimbal tapping is a technique used on all glide cams where the operator will use their thumb and forefinger in order to properly control the gimbal when panning and tilting. If you've watched a lot of my previous glide cam videos, you will know that the more contact you make with your glide cam, the more unwanted movements and shakiness you will see in your footage. So the less contact you make, the better. So by using the tapping technique, we'll be able to get those smooth tilts, those smooth pans, and overall beautiful looking shots. Now, how do we properly pan? Let's go ahead and grab our gimbal here. Again, I like to use the palm handle holding technique here. So basically we're taking the handle of the glide cam, putting it in my palm, then cupping the handle like this. Again, this takes off a lot of the pressure from your forearm and you can actually fly your glide cam for longer periods of time. Now tapping is so important. I wanna show you the difference between tapping and not tapping. So if I were to do like a, a quick pan like this, and just simply firmly grip onto the glide cam's gimbal, you'll notice that the stops are very rough and it can unbalance your glide cam. It makes for a really, really ugly shot. So instead, try tapping. Now you're not gonna be able to achieve such fast pans, and most of the time you won't need such fast pans in your shots, but with tapping, you will be able to dampen out the stops so it slowly comes to a stop. That's the type of movement you want in your footage, especially when you're using a glide cam. Smoothness is key and it shows a lot of cinematic elements in your footage. It shows your audience that the camera operator is a pro. Non-jittery and smooth movements. That's the type of look we are going for. So remember to use your forefinger and your thumb and gently tap the gimbal. And as you get better at practicing and controlling your gimbal, you can actually start speeding up the pan until you get to the speed that you want. And eventually, you'll get such a quick pan and a smooth pan as well. So yes, it does take a lot of practice, guys. But see how I have nice clean stops? That's the look that we want. Now, let's learn how to properly tilt with your glide cam. Let's take the glide cam. And this tilt is really accurate, yet it takes a lot of practice. What doesn't take practice, right? Especially with the glide cam, because these things are pretty tough to use. But the footage is incredible once you become good at it. So when tilting, we want to start off by gimbal tapping on the gimbal, and then slowly making our way towards the bottom of the stabilizer. This allows us to have much more control than simply using a fixed point for tilting. For example, I don't wanna just stay on the gimbal, otherwise I can start getting some wobbly motion in the, in the bottom of the stabilizer. And then if I just continuously stay on the bottom of the stabilizer, I'll get some wobbly motion at the top. So I like to change the position of my hand. That way, I will continue controlling the weight of the glide cam and it will make really smooth tilts. But continuously tap. Remember, the less contact you make with the glide cam, the better results you are going to get. For those of you who are still on this video and haven't clicked off, I applaud you and I need to reward you. So what is the reward? I'm gonna give you another crucial tip with the glide cam, and that is how to make hard stops. So for example, if I wanna take the glide cam move quickly forward and stop without any weird swaying or balancing issues, there are techniques involved. For example, again, we're gonna include the gimbal tapping technique, but we have to get a really nice feel for the glide cam. Now, if I don't tap the gimbal, 
You'll notice that if I do hard stops, you might see some swaying a little bit on the glide cam. Mine is really well balanced, so I'm not gonna see too much swaying, but you might see a little bit of panning to the right or to the left since there's nothing controlling the gimbal. It's difficult to explain this, but if you use this simple practicing technique where you move the gimbal quickly forward, quickly back, you will be able to see and feel the weight and how it's changing as you quickly move forward and back. And you will be able to get those nice sharp stops that you've always been wanting. Continuously gimbal tap and you will feel the weight change in the glide cam. And you will actually adapt by practicing and you will start feeling what is the proper amount of grip that you should be applying to the gimbal when you're tapping. See that? Slowly, as I move forward, the gimbal likes to move forward. And when I move back, the gimbal likes to move back. You know, this is simple law of gravity, physics. So it's gonna move according to how you move. So you have to adjust the grips of your fingers accordingly to get those nice stops. And here's a profile shot of what I'm doing. I'm getting nice hard stops here. All right, and again, tapping is so important. If I just grip on to the gimbal like this, and you know, it, it really defeats the purpose of using a glide cam and a gimbal. So those are three crucial techniques in panning, tilting, and creating hard stops with your glide cam. Don't forget to give this video a big like, share it with your friends, subscribe to my channel as well, and don't forget to leave comments in the comment section below. And if you are curious on what kind of gimbal this is, you can look in the description box below. This is the Lang Stabilizer. However, it is slightly modified with the counterweights. I used two different gimbals to build this one. So this is a manually custom build gimbal. However, most of it is from a Lang Stabilizer. So if you wanna know where you can buy it, again, check the link in the description box below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I can't wait to see what you create. Bye-bye.